Hello everybody and I uh, hope you enjoyed last week's case. Uh, we're now going to look at the MRI findings from the case which Elsa presented on Monday. So if you remember this is a six-year-old female neutered greyhound which presented with paracute onset uh, and non-progressive neurological signs. Okay so this is the uh, MRI and um, so we've got here the transverse T2 weighted image here on the right and the sagittal T2 weighted image here on the left. I like to um, start looking at the T2 weighted images. It generally shows most pathology um, most clearly, so it's quite a sensitive sequence for detecting abnormalities. Um, if we start off with the transverse plane images, as we scroll through, we're essentially wanting to see, do we see alterations in signal intensity? Is the left and right sides of the brain symmetrical? Um, are there any signal alterations? We're looking at the conformation, the architecture, are the structures the normal um, shape and size, etc. So as we scroll through, um, what we see is we have a small lesion here in the right thalamus, very angular in shape. We can see there's no mass effect, there's no swelling, um, although it's quite small, so we wouldn't necessarily expect a huge mass effect, uh, but very sharply marginated in a very curious sort of wedge-shaped, angular shape. Scrolling further caudally, um, what we see is that we have a much larger lesion here, slightly more ill-defined within the uh, left cerebellar hemisphere. So we can see this um, large lesion here, which is relatively homogeneous T2 hyperintensity. And then on the contralateral side, we see a, a much smaller, more sharply marginated, higher signal lesion in the right um, rostral part of the cerebellum. So one thing to note about these lesions, in addition to the, the distribution, um, so we have cerebellum bilaterally, we have right thalamus, is the fact that these lesions are essentially confined to grey matter. So we can see here this lesion, particularly on the right, that um, it's really entirely confined to grey matter, sparing the adjacent white matter. If we look on the sagittal plane images, we can see the small lesion here in the right cerebellar hemisphere rostrally, and we see the small kind of angular shaped lesion here in the right thalamus, and then scrolling through to the left, again we see this very nice almost wedge-shaped lesion here which is within the left rostral part of the cerebellum and predominantly in the grey matter um, but also extending into the cerebellar peduncle and interestingly in this case we have um, a small um, lesion or extension of the lesion into the um, left called the colliculus. Well, on MRI it's very important that we um, compare the different pulse sequences and see the appearance of the lesions. Um, the different signal characteristics will give us a lot of information about um, what's going on in terms of the, the etiology of the pathology. So in this case, um, if we look at the lesion in the right thalamus, we can see it's high signal on T2, but very low signal on T1. Uh, we don't really see it on the flare sequence, so this would suggest um, Possibly this is partly cystic. Um, this is a T2 star grain teco sequence, so we use this sequence for primarily looking for hemorrhages intracranially. And in this case, we don't see any signs of susceptibility artifact or signal void, which would typically indicate uh, brain hemorrhage. If we look at the cerebellar lesions, what we find is that the lesion in the right cerebellar hemisphere is high signal on. Uh, T2, so very high signal on T2, so pretty much ISO intense to CSF. It's low signal on the flare, so the flare sequence essentially is a T2 weighted sequence where but we suppress the signal from the CSF and we have very low signal on the T1. So this combination of um, signal intensity, so high on T2, low on flare and low on T1, would indicate that this is a, a cystic uh, lesion, or at least the, the tissue is similar and characteristic to CSF. However, the lesion in the left cerebellar hemisphere is a high signal on the T2, but also high signal on the on the flare and kind of intermediate low signal um, on the on the T1. Um, 
So this is a fairly non-specific finding, but you know, it could be due to edema or inflammation, etc. So they, um, we would need to interpret the uh, findings in conjunction with the other uh, lesion characteristics of shape and distribution, etc. Uh, we don't see any evidence of hemorrhage um, on the grid echo sequence of, of any of the lesions. So on this particular study, we had some additional um, pulse sequences which are commonly performed by many uh, centres. So here we have diffusion-weighted imaging. So this image here in the centre, this is a diffusion-weighted image. And then the right here, this is something called the ADC map, so the apparent diffusion coefficient uh, map, which allows us to quantify diffusion. And so diffusion-weighted imaging is a pulse sequence which allows us to assess the uh, essentially the diffusibility of water in the brain. So it tells us something about the kind of the microenvironment um, of, of the lesions. And it's um, commonly used for investigation of stroke. It's a very sensitive sequence for stroke imaging, particularly in the very acute stages, uh, but has many applications and, and certainly gives us a lot of additional information. So if we look in this particular case, we see that um, the lesion here in, in, in the right thalamus, when we look on the diffusion weighted imaging, we see it's low signal on the uh, DWI and high signal on the apparent diffusion coefficient. So this tells us we have actually um, increased diffusibility. So we can actually see this lesion here in the thalamus has similar characteristics to CSF. Likewise, the lesion in the right cerebral hemisphere also has um, high diffusibility. So um, you see here it's again similar um, diffusion to, to CSF. However, if we look at the lesion in the left cerebellar hemisphere, here we see uh, the pattern of restricted diffusion. So we have high signal on the uh, diffusion weighted imaging and low signal on the ADC confirming this is restricted diffusion. So restricted diffusion can occur for um, a variety of mechanisms, but um, in, in stroke imaging, this is something which is typically seen in acute um, stages. So um, this would be consistent with uh, an acute um, ischemic stroke. And finally, if we look at the contrast enhancement pattern, uh, here we have the T1 pre-contrast and transverse and dorsal T1 post-contrast. So what we can see is the uh, right thalamic lesion. Essentially, we see a uh, no contrast enhancement, or certainly very little. Scrolling caudally in the uh, cerebellum, the lesion in the left cerebellar hemisphere shows this quite mild, faint uh, peripheral contrast enhancement, whereas essentially there's no enhancement of the lesion in the right cerebellar hemisphere. So in summary, the MRI in this case shows the presence of sharply marginated, roughly wedge-shaped or angular T2 hyperintensities within the grey matter of the rostral cerebellar hemispheres bilaterally. We have a lesion on the left side which shows restricted diffusion on the DWI, whereas the lesion on the right side of the cerebellum shows atrophy with cavitation and increased diffusion on the DWI. And additionally, we have a lesion in the right thalamus, which was cystic and also showed increased diffusion on DWI. So based on the appearance of the MRI images in combination with the uh, clinical findings of an acute onset, non-progressive uh, neurological signs, the primary differentials in this case would be an acute left cerebellar ischemic, so non-hemorrhagic infarct within the territory of the rostral cerebral artery. Um, this all artery also supplies the caudal calliculus, so which would explain the involvement of uh, the calliculus in, in this case. We have a chronic lacuna infarct within the right thalamus, which is in the region of the perforating arteries, and we have a chronic uh, right cerebellar infarct also in the territory of the uh, rostral cerebellar uh, arteries. So in this particular case, we have evidence of ischemic brain disease of differing ages. Um, it's likely, given the history, that the lesion in the left cerebellum um, would explain the, the clinical findings. Um, in this case, this is the really nice example of the classic appearance of um, ischemic stroke. And um, you know, the features which would suggest that really would be the, the grey matter predilections, so 
ischemia typically will affect grey matter, um, typically sparing white matter. The distribution of the changes in this case is typical, as is the appearance of the um, contrast enhanced mutant and DWI. So just a really nice example of um, ischemic brain disease um, and how it appears with the different ages. So I uh, hope you found that interesting and we'll look forward to uh, seeing the outcome of this case uh, from Elsa later in the week. So uh, thank you and hope you find that interesting.